Welcome back. In this video, I will be looking at 11.3 using trigonometric identities to integrate. 11.3 represents chapter 11, section 3 of the Pearson A-Level Maths, Pure Maths, Year 2 textbook. If you go back to my video 11.1 and 11.2, I went through integrals of standard functions and how to use these integrals of standard functions to integrate some simple expressions. Over here, I've got four different integrals up on the board. Okay. Each of these integrals cannot be integrated at the moment, but what I can do is use a trigonometric identities to rewrite each of these integrals in a form that can be integrated. So let's start off with question number one. The integral of tan squared theta d theta is the same as the integral of sec squared theta minus one. So I've made tan squared theta the subject in the identity 1 plus tan squared theta equals sec squared theta. Okay, I know how to integrate sec squared theta, it will just be tan theta. Minus, I know how to integrate 1, it will just be theta. Plus c, the constant of integration. Question number 2, I want to integrate sine squared theta d theta. I can't integrate this at the moment, but I can use the double angle formula for cos to rewrite sine squared theta. The one that I'm going to be using is cos 2 theta is equal 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. I want to make sine squared theta the subject. So first of all, I can write 2 sine squared theta is equal 1 minus cos 2 theta. Therefore, sine squared theta is equal a half minus a half cos 2 theta. So this particular integral over here is the same as the integral of a half minus a half cos 2 theta d theta. Okay, the integral of a half is a half theta minus, I want to integrate a half cos 2 theta. First of all, I write a half multiplied by 1 over the coefficient of theta, in this case it is 2, sine 2 theta plus c, the constant of integration. I can simplify this to write a half theta minus a quarter sine 2 theta plus c. Moving on to question number 3, integral of cos squared theta d theta. At the moment this can't be integrated. I need to use a specific trigonometric identity in order to integrate this. The trigonometric identity that I will be using is the double angle formula for cos. In particular, I will be using cos 2 theta equal 2 cos squared theta minus 1. I need to make cos squared theta the subject, so that's what I'm going to do now. 2 cos squared theta is equal cos 2 theta plus 1. Therefore, cos squared theta is equal a half cos 2 theta plus a half. This particular integral is the same as the integral of a half cos 2 theta plus a half d theta. I can now integrate the first term and that will just be a half multiplied by 1 over the coefficient of theta. In this case, it is 2 sine 2 theta plus the second term, a half, that integrates to a half theta plus c, the constant of integration. I can clean this up and write 1 over 4 sine 2 theta plus 1 over 2 theta plus c. Moving on to question number 4, integral of cot squared theta d theta. This cannot be integrated at the moment. I need to use a specific trigonometric identity in order to rewrite cot squared theta in a form that can be integrated. So the identity that I will be using is 1 plus cot squared theta is equal cosec squared theta. I need to make cot squared theta the subject. So if I make cot squared theta the subject, I get cosec squared theta minus 1. So this integral is the same as the integral of cosec squared theta minus 1 d theta. Now the integral of the first term cosec squared theta is just minus cot theta. Minus the integral of 1 is theta plus c, 
the constant of integration. Here are two exam style questions. Let's have a look at question one, part A. By expanding sine 3x plus 2x in brackets and sine 3x minus 2x in brackets, or otherwise, show that sine 5x plus sine x is identical to 2 sine 3x cos 2x. Now, ladies and gents, my first step is to use the addition formula for sine a plus b in brackets to expand sine 3x plus 2x in brackets. The expansion for this is sine 3x cos 2x plus cos 3x sine 2x. The next step is to use the addition formula for sine a minus b in brackets to expand sine 3x minus 2x in brackets. The expansion for this is sine 3x cos 2x minus cos 3x sine 2x. I'm going to call this equation 1 and this equation 2. My next step is to add equation 1 and equation 2. First of all, I'm going to be adding this and this. I know that sine 3x plus 2x in brackets is just sine 5x. So I have sine 5x plus sine 3x minus 2x in brackets is just sine x. Is equal to this over here sine 3x cos 2x plus this over here sine 3x cos 2x will just be 2 sine 3x cos 2x. Cos 3x sine 2x plus minus cos 3x sine 2x is just 0. So I get sine 5x plus sine x equal 2 sine 3x cos 2x. To put the icing on the cake, what I can do is stick in another line over here. Okay, therefore sine 5x plus sine x is identical to 2 sine 3x cos 2x as required. Let's have a look at question 1 part b. Hence, find the integral of sine 3x cos 2x dx. Now ladies and gents, in the exam, whenever the word hence is used, you have to refer back to the previous part of the question. So if I go back to part a, I know that sine 5x plus sine x is identical to 2 sine 3x cos 2x. This implies that sine 3x cos 2x is identical to a half sine 5x plus a half sine x. Therefore, this particular integral can be rewritten as the integral of a half sine 5x plus a half sine x dx. The first term integrates to minus a half multiplied by 1 over the coefficient of x, which is 5, cos 5x. The second term integrates to minus a half cos x, then you have plus c, the constant of integration. You can actually clean this up and write the following. Minus 1 over 10 cos 5x minus a half cos x plus c. Moving on to question 2 part a. Show that cos to the power 4x is identical to 1 over 8 cos 4x plus 1 over 2 cos 2x plus 3 over 8. Ladies and gents, I'm going to start off from the left hand side. Cos to the power 4x is the same as writing cos squared x multiplied by cos squared x. The next step is to use a double angle formula for cos. In particular, I'll be using cos 2x equal 2 cos squared x minus 1 to make cos squared x the subject. I get cos squared x equal a half cos 2x plus a half. So I can replace cos squared x with a half cos 2x plus a half to give me a half cos 2x plus a half in bracket multiplied by a half cos 2x plus a half in bracket. So after expanding the double brackets, I get 1 over 4 cos squared 2x plus 1 over 2 cos 2x plus 1 over 4. The next step is to use a double angle formula for cos once again. In particular, I'll be using cos 4x equal 2 cos squared 2x minus 1 to make cos squared 2x the subject. If I make cos squared 2x the subject, I get a half cos 4x plus a half. So what I can do now is replace cos squared 2x with a half cos 4x plus a half. And then I've got plus a half cos 2x plus 1 over 4. Now I need to expand this bracket 
simplify and obtain this particular result. So after expanding and simplifying, I get 1 over 8 cos 4x plus 1 over 2 cos 2x plus 3 over 8 as required. Part B, hence. So I need to refer back to my answer in part A. Find the integral of cos to the power 4x dx. Now cos to the power 4x is identical to 1 over 8 cos 4x plus 1 over 2 cos 2x plus 3 over 8. So this particular integral is the same as writing the integral of 1 over 8 cos 4x plus 1 over 2 cos 2x plus 3 over 8 dx. Now, the first term integrates to 1 over 8 multiplied by 1 over the coefficient of x, which is 4, sine 4x, plus the second term integrates to 1 over 2 multiplied by 1 over the coefficient of x, which is 2, sine 2x, plus the third term integrates to 3 over 8x, and then you've got your plus c, the constant of integration. We can clean this up and write 1 over 32 sine 4x plus 1 over 4 sine 2x plus 3 over 8x plus c. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to subscribe.